Tottenham could be selling Richarlison this summer, according to The Athletic. Jack Pitbrook, a very reliable journalist when it comes to Tottenham news and a very reliable journalist in general, has said that Tottenham have serious interest coming in from clubs in Saudi Arabia for Richarlison and potentially could give Spurs the opportunity to make their money back if they sanction the sow. We're going to jump straight into it. Make sure you go down, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you do like the video if you haven't already. Now, it almost seems like the, the fan base are a little bit all over the place at the moment in terms of Ange Postacoglu. Levy out seems to be trending every single day. And the forward line at the moment isn't really firing on all cylinders. But the one guy, in my opinion, that when he does come into the starting eleven and does do a very good job, in my opinion, in terms of holding up the ball, he's an aerial threat. He scored goals this season. He's double digits for goals in the Premier League and hasn't really played an awful amount of games compared to the others. He's played 28 games out of a possible 35 with 11 goals and four assists. So we've got 15 goal contributions in 28. And of course, we are talking about Richarlison. Now, if there was a world in which Tottenham could make their money back on Richarlison in, and not, uh, not make a loss, if Saudi Arabia are coming in, and we know they've spent big money on players, Neymar, you know, Ruben Neves has gone there, Kula Bali, Mendy, the list goes on and on, on and on and on. If there was a world in which Richarlison had offers from Saudi Arabia, I don't see a world in which we can really turn that down. You know, Jack Pitbrook has put, there is interest from clubs in Saudi Arabia in Richarlison, which would give Spurs the opportunity to make their money back if they choose to sanction us out. Now, the one thing that we need this summer is an overhaul in our forwards. We, we, we've lost our, you know, threatening attack that we had maybe a few years ago. And yes, you could say Harry Kane's gone. Yes, you could say Son's form has dropped a little bit. Um, you know, you've got the likes of Brian Hill that will probably be going. You've got the likes of uh, Solomon that will probably be going as well. You've also got Timo Werner, will he get made a permanent signing? Brennan Johnson and Kulazewski are predominantly the only ones that I think we can say fair and square will be here. And I look at I look at Tottenham in general. I think we need to move Kulazewski into an attacking midfield position, maybe an advanced eight role. I don't necessarily think he's got it, the credentials to be a proper wide man in an Ange Postacoglu system, which would then mean that the only forward we would have on the, on the right would be Johnson and on the left would be Son. So we need to bring in a number of forwards this summer, not just to improve our 11, but there could be a world in which a Brian Hill, a Solomon and a Timo Werner don't get made permanent. And then in a world where Kulazewski gets made as an advanced eight and Richarlison goes to Saudi Arabia. Now, of course, we've been linked to number nines galore, Santiago Jimenez, Ivan Tony. Alexander uh, Isak is a name that keeps coming up for not necessarily for Tottenham, but for rival teams. So the striker market is not mate, probably the, the strongest of market to get players in. But in terms of Richarlison, you know, he's he's valued at, I think he's valued at around 45 million, according to transfermarket.co.uk. 40 million euros they value him at, 15 goal contributions in 28 games. His numbers in a Spurs shirt, let's just be honest, haven't been, haven't really been the highest. You know, he's got 15 goals in 66 games, which is roughly one in four. In an Everton shirt, he had 53 in 52, which is roughly one in three. And a Watford shirt, he had five in 41, which is roughly one goal every eight games. He's got two goals in six games in the Champions League for Spurs. He's got 12 goals in 55 games in the Premier League with eight assists. He's got 20 goal contributions in 55. If Tottenham wants to be a, a serious football club next year, then Ange Postacoglu has come out and said that we need to look at potentially changing a lot of our squad, which then means no one's position is really that safe. 
you know, uh, Dan Kilpatrick, another very reliable journalist, come out and said that the club is determined to give Ange Postacoglu the time and support needed to build a squad in his image, which leaves many players facing uncertain futures. Now, when you look at the squad that played against uh, that played against Liverpool at the weekend, I see a world in which where I don't think a lot of those players are safe. Outside of the back line, you know, I see a world in which I don't think Saar, uh, sorry, I don't think Basuma's safe. I don't think Basuma, uh, Basuma and Emerson Royale potentially could be here next summer. When I look at the, which is a shame because we know how talented Basuma is. Hoiberg will probably be gone. Brian Hill will probably be gone. There's a world in which Giovanni Lo Celso could be gone as well. Oli Skip, I only think, will be here because the fact he's homegrown. Richarlison could be gone. So, you know, in terms of the back four, next season, you'd imagine it would be the same goalkeeper, Porro, Romero, Van der Ven, and it will be, probably be uh, Udogi. Then we need to bring in an out-and-out out number six in that anchor role. Let's figure out who's going to be the eight, whether it's going to be Benson Kaur, Kulisevsky, or Bisuma. I probably think it will be Benson Kaur. And then Madison in the 10, but we also need depth in the 10, someone like a Morgan Gibbs-White. The forward line with Johnson, Son, and Kulisevsky. We all know Son's best for me on the left-hand side. I don't get why Ange Postacoglu played this front three. He did play this front three against Aston Villa, and it did work, to be fair. But against the Liverpool side, which you know, you know, we know we know their strengths. And I don't think Liverpool were that great. I just think we were defensively, defensively really, really bad. And you look at the games we've got coming up, we've still got to play Manchester City. We've still got to play a Burnley side that are fighting for their lives. If we if we beat Sheffield United and Burnley, which you would expect we would beat, you expect Tottenham to beat, you know, a Burnley and a Sheffield United side, then we could quite easily, quite easily um, get into a Europa League position next season. We do have Newcastle and Chelsea kind of breathing down our necks. And if we were to slip up against a Manchester City side, which you expect Tottenham would probably lose that game, and Newcastle beat Man United, which you expect they would because Man United are absolutely diabolical at the moment. Newcastle could be within three points of us going into the final two games of the season, as well as Chelsea. I'm not sure who Chelsea have got to play. Chelsea have currently got uh, Nottingham Forest, Brighton and Bournemouth, so not the easiest of games. And I think Newcastle have got uh, Brighton, Manchester United and Brentford. So once again, not the easiest of games. So for Tottenham, it's about getting into the summer. In terms of Richarlison, do I think that he... Is the, is the right man for Tottenham in terms of an overall number nine? No, but I do think he can be, at times, a valuable squad player. You know, you look at the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City, they've got five or six forwards that can play a number of positions and their depth is a lot better than ours. That is the difference between, between Tottenham and these clubs right now. One, they're better than us in the, in the depth. And two, they've got players that can play a number of positions, you know, a number of positions all over the pitch. So I look at it right now. Tottenham needs to just get into the summer, see where we end up. I do think we um I do think we can have a good summer. You know, but if we if we get if we get in a in a world where Richarlison, you know, is available for and, and we sell him and we get say 45, 50 million pound back and you put that £45 million towards Santiago Jimenez, that has proven he's a goal scorer. He's proven it in Europe, in the Conference League, and the Europa League. And in my opinion, we need to do absolutely everything we can next season to go in and win that Europa League. That, for me, should be the, the main goal next season. You know, we haven't won a trophy in so, so long. We need to do absolutely everything we can to bring a winning mentality back to this football club right now. It's almost like we, it's almost like the fan base is at each other's necks. And the only way it's going to get back on track is if we start winning football matches again and we start signing good players.
So look, that's where I'm at with Richarlison. If a big comes in, I would sell. But I think there is also a lot of other players in the football club that we should, should be sold first. Make sure you check out the live stream. I'll be live today at around 6 p.m. I'll see you all soon. Thank you all for watching. I 